and everyone so that you know you should have a copy of both the handout that Job sent, uh, which was really well done and informative, but also we put on the um, invite the service so that if you don't have the service, you can download the service, print it out, and then you've got it so when we're streaming, you have a copy of it. And so we're going to turn it over to Job. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you again, uh, Monshi Sensei, and all of you uh, for giving me this opportunity to uh, share uh, part of the book, uh, book project I'm uh, undertaking. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, Hagami Sensei and he, his relationship to two uh, spiritual giants who lived uh, during the thir 13th century in Japan, Honen and Myo-e. Uh, in order to avoid any technical glitch, if possible, those of you who are attending uh, uh, via through Zoom, I would like you to turn off uh, the video camera so that uh, we won't use too much, uh, too many uh, data. So those those of you who are able to turn off, please do so. So let me explain what we are, what I'm going to present. Um, as many of you know, I am writing a book about uh, uh, Shoto Hagami. Um, uh, Hagami was a prominent Tendai Buddhist leader who made invaluable contributions to cross-religious dialogue across the world. And among other things, he had a rare capacity to hold mutually exclusive viewpoints simultaneously and still retain the ability to function. I think that's uh, very distinct in Hagami Sensei, but I think that is very um, uh, characteristic to, uh, how do I say this, Tendai, Tendai approach. Uh, and so, um, and uh, this talk, uh, and so this talk will explore the capacity through it, uh, his his capacity of holding uh, different views simultaneously, uh, through illustrating his admiration, respect for two religious giants, Honen and uh, Myo E. Um, and uh, I will uh, divide this talk into three parts. First, an overview um, of uh, Bud uh, Buddhist traditions in Japan. Um, and contextualizing uh, those two figures, Honen and Myoe. And then secondly, Myoe and uh, Honen and Myoe from a comparative perspective. And thirdly, uh, Hagami's take on Honen and Myoe. Uh, while I'm addressing uh, this topic as, uh, how do I say this, a topic on its own, um, this talk can also be understood as a sequel to my last uh, talk on uh, which was on uh, Prince Shotoku and his uh, spirit of harmony. So let me start with the uh, first par part, an overview. Um, here we go. So um, let's start with an overview. Um, as Dengyo Daishi Saicho puts it, um, the origins of Japanese Buddhism uh, are best uh, associated with the uh, Prince, Prince Shotoku, uh, whom you see on the top here. Um, yes, before Prince Shotoku, Buddhism was already in Japan, but it was really through Prince Shotoku and his radical uh, reformations in the sixth and the seventh century that Buddhism in Japan started to manifest its distinct characteristics. Uh, I won't get to, uh, into this topic. Um, uh, uh, well, I, I will still say that some of the uh, distinct uh, characteristics of uh, Japanese Buddhism uh, uh, include um, this, the notion of one great vehicle, uh, Ichidaijo, Ichijo, Ichidaijo uh, which is inclusive and pluralistic, essentially uh, non-denominational or trans-denominational. Uh, um, it, it, it integrates not only um, different teachings, but also it all, uh, transcends the boundary between the um, ordained and uh, lay people. And also it sees uh, all existence as manifesting the true nature of reality, uh, including uh, stones and uh, trees and so forth. Uh, and now um, in Japan, uh, after Prince Shotoku, two centuries later, uh, we have two prominent figures, Saicho and uh, Kukai. Each in his own way advanced the uh, Prince Shotoku's uh, approach, Saicho as Tendai and uh, Kukai as Shingon. 
as many of you know, uh, uh, Shingon basically remain, remained somehow uh, monolithic or monophonic, whereas Tendai was inherently polyphonic um, uh, and from which uh, emerged nearly all or many of the major schools of uh, Japanese Buddhism. And so you have a uh, Honen's uh, Pure Land, right? uh, 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 Honen through Genshin, right? uh, you see on the um, uh, left side, and then uh, Shindan uh, uh, on the one si side, and on the other side, you see also someone like Esai who studied uh, Rinzai Zen, and then also Dogen, uh, Soto Zen, and also Nichiren. And now, many of them, uh, Esai, Dogen, uh, Honen, they didn't try to create their own approach, their own school, just uh, their disciples started to um, develop a distinct approach as a distinct school. Now, today's topic, uh, I, uh, how do you say, uh, I highlighted with uh, these red frames. So you see on the left side, Honen and Mio, uh, uh, um, on the right side, Honen, uh, he um he um he he came from Tendai and he spent nearly 30 years at Mount Hiei. And in fact, he regarded he, himself to the end of his life as a Tendai monk and as someone who is continuing the project of um Dengyo Daishi Saicho, whereas Mio, uh, as you can see on the right side here, uh, was uh, and he, he basically comes from the line or lineage of Kukai, but he actually uh, transcended the category of Shingon. Uh, he was ordained both in the tradition of uh, Kegon, or, uh, Flower uh, Garland, and Shingon, and uh, he was uh, also trained in part by Eisai. Um, uh, Esai actually wanted uh, Mio -e to continue his uh, legacy, but Esai somehow said no to that. And then also some say that uh, Esai uh, inspired the Dogen as well, but Mio -e himself, uh, himself surpassed denominational boundaries. And according to Hagami Sensei, uh, Mio -e's approach is, um, you know, while, well, how do you put this? Um, people usually see Mio -e as. Uh, affiliated with the uh, uh, Shingon and or uh, Kegon, uh, Hagami Sensei said uh, he is best seen as affiliated with the uh, Shakamuni school, <laughs> Shakamuni approach. Basically, it's uh, you know it's, uh, transcending any denominational category. So now let me move on to the second part. Um, uh, Honen and Mioe, more specifically. Uh, they both lived in the 13th century, the Kamakura period, and uh, yet uh, Honen and, uh, how do I say this, uh, Mioe were polar opposites. <laughs> they are really different from each other. Uh, uh, Mioe, wa, Mioe wa, uh, uh, Honen was older than Mioe. Mioe was uh, 40, years, 40 years younger than Honen. And uh, I think it's important to note that uh, Mio, uh, Honen really lived in the tumultuous period um, where, uh, uh, before the establishment of the Kamakura period, uh, whereas uh, uh, Mio is uh, really, he was active after the establishment of Kamakura period, uh, somehow, uh, you know, less, uh, uh, tumultuous, uh, tumultuous, should I say? Uh, I will say more about this later. So uh, there are few aspects uh, that we can uh, really, uh, how do I say this? Uh, there are distinct, uh, we can see distinct uh, contrasts between uh, Honen and Mioe. Here I'm uh, drawing insights from, uh, this is, there's an excellent book on this topic by Soho Machida. Um, and uh, so there are four aspects I especially would like to take into account. One is the locus of hope. Where can where can hope find? Uh, where can hope be found? Where can hope be found? Secondly, focus of concern. What's the issue? Uh, thirdly, what to rely on? This is an issue of jiriki and tariki, self power and other power. And fourthly, the general orientation of each uh, each uh, figure. Right? This, is, this has to do with the Mikyo and the 
thank you. Uh, the esoteric teaching and uh, exoteric teaching. So let me start with the first one. Where can uh, hope be found? Um, where can hope be found? <laughs> so <laughs> Honen, uh, he, he basically, uh, you know, he lived uh, in the tumultuous period and uh, accepted as a given the idea of Mapo or the degenerate age of Dharma. Uh, and uh, he was, uh, he saw, he saw no redeeming possibility in this world and instead focused on attaining peace and truth in after death. That is in the pure land. Whereas Mio, uh, uh, contrastively, uh, by his time, the tumultuous period was nearly over, still continued, but, but much, much less intense. And he was able to transcend the notion of Mapo and so a redeeming possibility within this world and try to fulfill it, uh, its potential. So Honen basically said, you know, utter the name of Amida Buddha, those who utter the name will um, unfailingly reach the pure land because it is based on Amida's original vow. So first you have to move to the pure land and there you will uh, 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 fulfill, uh, materialize your Buddhahood. Now in, in the handout that I sent you, this source, all, all, the, all the sources I'm including in the, nearly including in the presentation you, you have in the handouts, but, but I, I, one correction, uh, here I uh, put translated as real uh, Honen's statement, the second line, uh, the name will, how does it, unfailingly reach, and this is the right correction. I, I think uh, in the handout I, I wrote, attain rebirth or will uh, rebirth or something like that. But reach is the right word. Ojo, uh, okay. Now, Myoe uh, on the other hand, he said, I'm not like those who focus on being saved in the next world. <laughs> Above all else, I seek to be what I ought to be in this world. <laughs> Here and now, that's really my, uh, my focus. And that's where I can find, at this very moment, we can find hope if we seek. <laughs> Next. Um, uh, so uh, they, they both uh, at, at the same time agree on one issue, the problem of Hongaku. Uh, Honen and Mioe both objected to the way in which their contemporary uh, monks understood the Tendai teaching of Hong Hongaku or inherent awakening, which can justify the status quo. In other words, if we are already enlightened, we don't have to learn or do practice. Right? So um, uh, Honen said no to that, Mioe said no to that, but the approach, the, the way in which they responded was not the same. Um, now, uh, what is, uh, what was uh, the concern of each? Um, Honen was, uh, his concern was broad. It was people in general, society in general, whereas Mioe, it, it's very specific. It's about monks. So um, Mio, uh, Honen said, um, people's state of mind manifests madness. This is a so social issue or a generational issue, a generation of Mapo, as if driven by intoxication and they have no regard for discerning right and wrong. Whereas Mio's one uh, concern is much more specific. Uh, he says, in addition to the six worlds of existence, there is a world for monks. As we monks have failed in terms of teaching, we are bearing its consequences. What can we do with the terrible state of Dharma teachers? People are not really, no, monks are not really committing themselves. That's the issue for, um, uh, that's a concern that uh, Mioe had. So what to rely on? Uh, tariki, other power or Jiriki, self power? Now, uh, Honen, uh, Tariki, yeah. <laughs> Mioe, Jiriki. Now, it's a very tricky word. Uh, uh, tariki, different people have different um, 
use in, in different ways. Uh, Honen's tariki is not identical to, I think, Shindan, his disciples, uh, uh, understanding of tariki. So, um, but, uh, uh, but the point uh, uh, Honen thereby uh, sought to make was the following. Honen advocated, ad, uh, ad advocated that the possibility of, of achieving Buddhahood through traditional modes of practice uh, in this period of Mapo was not, no longer viable. Right? And so he proclaimed that uh, practice of Nembutsu, of reciting Namu Amidabutsu, I take refuge in Amida Buddha um, or in, in eternal life, in eternal light, was the only viable alternative to the conventional practices. So you have to uh, recite Amida Buddha. And he used to recite 60,000 times every day. So, uh, it, so you really need to do something. So it's not just being passive, right? It's there is a tariki aspect, but there, oh, there is also a jiriki aspect. Yeah. So um, uh, Honen's approach uh, thus uh, leans toward the axis of tariki, other power, uh, 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 and uh, some may say that this is uh, this is a tendency that we see more in uh, the Mahayana tradition. Um, on the other hand, uh, Mioe's approach, uh, he lean, it's, it leans toward the axis of jiriki self-power, a tendency that you may, some may say that we see more in uh, Shravaka Theravada uh, tradition. Uh, it's a contestable uh, uh, statement, but uh, Mioe himself really tried to practice uh, exactly what uh, Shakamuni uh, told and uh, did. Um, so, um, uh, uh, Honen said, right, because Nembutsu is easy, it is viable for everyone, while the other practices are because they are difficult, not viable for every kind of people. Uh, whereas Mioe said, set aside the remarks by uncommitted ones. Look, if you do just as I do, uh, uh, namely uh, become keen on meditation and practice exactly what the Buddha taught, you will right away experience such super, super normal experiences as I do. You just have to do it. Do, you have to do practice. Come to TBI, <laughs> do meditation and so forth. Okay. Now, um, in terms of the general orientation, uh, Kenkyo exoteric, Mikyo esoteric, um, yeah, uh, Hone may say perhaps <laughs> mine is more like a Kenkyo, whereas Miyue say mine is, his, uh, his is more like Mikyo. Um, in the following sense, Hone's approach resonates with the general tendency of Kenkyo. Um, uh, exoteric uh, Buddhist approach or tradition, which um, in which you accommodate the teaching and practice according to people's com competence. Right? So you recognize that people are living in the degenerate age of Dharma. So you have to find a way that they can uh, uh, achieve enlightenment. So you um, seek to meet them where they are. And uh, you discern that in impermanence and ephemeral, ephemeral nature of life and reality. And hence, you try to minimize your attachment to this life. Right? On the other hand, Mioe's approach resonates more with the general tendency of Mikyo or exoteric, uh, no, esoteric approach, um, where the hidden teaching manifests uh, itself on its own. Yeah, it has to be S here. Okay, and uh, and you discern the permanence and fullness of this life. Right? Um, uh, you discern the permanence and permanent aspect and fullness of this world, and you thus seek to be one with the ultimate mystery of existence here and now. New right? new. This ultimate mystery enters into you, and you enter into it. So. Um, um, 
Now, Miao responded to uh, uh, Honen. Uh, in other words, uh, initially, Miao respected Honen, right? but when Miao learned about Honen's teaching, he became furious and he found it out outrageous and composed a treaty criticizing Honen. And so um, Mioen, uh, Honen, uh, no, uh, yeah, Mio, according to Honen, um, well, he, this is what Honen said, teachers of other schools are all great. And he basically said that his approach uh, includes, uh, encapsulates the essence of all the other teachings, including the essence of uh, Tendai Buddhism. But at this, uh, so uh, other schools are, uh, are great, uh, he said, but uh, at this degenerate age of Dharma, they are virtually not viable. A wretch like myself uh, should take the practice of Nembutsu that can redeem any sentient being. So, uh, uh, whereas Mioe said, uh, he really said this to Honen, uh, and the treaty was written the very year Honen passed away, so prob probably Honen didn't read it. Um, you are the very cause of our present day degeneration of Dharma. If you adhere to this notion that the Buddha teaching is total is in total decline and eradicate, er, eradicate the bodhicitta, the scriptural teachings will all also va vanish. So Honen, according to Mioe, you are the very cause of the problem. <laughs> now, what's amazing is that uh, Hagami Sensei was able to respect both uh, Honen and Mioe. <laughs> okay. So um, now the issue is a bit tricky. Okay. Um, there are two things that are not that are not clear with Honen's teaching. Um, one is uh, only or best. In other words, did Hone maintain that Nembutsu is the only legitimate practice or it is the best one, but not necessarily the only legitimate practice? It's not exactly clear whether Hone said that you have to dismiss forever, uh, not, not forever, but you can dis. How do I say this? Nembutsu is the one and only one practice that you can practice uh, in the degenerate age of Dharma. Or he said other approaches are fine, but but uh, Nembutsu is the best one. So he, I, is he saying Nembutsu is only or best? Uh, the, the other uncertainty is the following one, time specific or time sensitive or not. Did Honen make that, that statement in relation spe specifically to the period of Mapo or in relation to any period? Uh, now, how Honen understood and how his disciples understood and how people today, right? <laughs> um, uh, those who uh, uh, affiliate themselves with the Pure Land, uh, the Pure Land tradition, are not exactly the same, right? But uh, uh, Mio, in any case, Miyoe understood Honen to be saying that Nembutsu is the only legitimate practice, irrespective of the category of Mapo. And this is how many think of Honen's teaching today. On the other hand, it should be noted that Honen also um, kept precepts, right? And uh, so um, he, he, he saw value in other practices as well. Now, um, are they complementary or contradictory to each other, right? And uh, I think it is important to note that uh, they can be understood as focusing on two aspects of the same coin, right? And so there's a famous uh, statement, Jogu Bodai, Geke Shujo. Jogu bodai geke shujo, which means that uh, you go upward and seek the wisdom of awakening, and you go downward to save uh, sentient beings. In a way, you can say that Mioe focused on the first half of this statement, whereas Honen focused on the second half. Or maybe 
some may say that those who do not like Honen, people may uh, they may say that Honen focused so much on the first that they, he compromised the first, whereas those who do not like Mioe would say that he focused so much on the first, whereas uh, he compromised the second. Okay. Now let me move on to Hagami Sensei on Honen and Mioe. Now, Hagami Sensei had profound admiration for both eh, Honen and Mio. Eh? Hagami, eh, Hagami Sensei, eh, he um, writes, eh, so um, Hagami Sensei and Mio, eh, uh, how does, eh, Honen, you see on the left side down, eh, Honen is from Okayama, and uh, you know, Hagami Sensei was also from Okayama. So um, um, the sheer fact of coming from the same place. Eh, um, developed in Hagami Sensei, you know, affinity. Uh, whereas toward the end of his life, ha Hagami Sensei, he was also um, abbot of a um, temple uh, called the Kozanji on top, uh, which was where uh, uh, Mioe uh, lived. Uh, at the same time, uh, Hagami Sensei, um, uh, he was uh, abbot of uh, what you see on the, the right side, Tonanji uh, Sakamoto, which is uh, where uh, Dengyo Daishi was born. Um, it's a very uh, uh, prominent uh, uh, temple. Now, um, uh, Hagami Sensei said on Honen as follow, I like Honen-san because he approved Shinran's marriage, and yet he himself, namely Honen himself, strictly kept uh, celebrate their lifestyle. That aspect, Hone manifested the in integrity of samurai. Yeah, Hone came from the family lineage of samurai. And also he lived as a Tendai monk throughout his life. In short, he exemplified exceptional open-mindedness. So that where Harami Sensei felt a closeness to um, uh, Hone. Um, and, and the sublime balance uh, between integrity and open-mindedness. Open That's what Hagami Sensei saw in Honen. Whereas uh, um, Mioe, Hagami Sensei says, uh, just like his heart was, uh, our heart must not have any taint whatsoever, is, uh, else uh, we cannot dream uh, good dreams. So, um, Keki tanaki kokoro arumajiki. Our heart must not have any taint whatsoever. So, uh, in order to arrive, reach that, uh, uh, arrive at that state of uh, consciousness, quality of consciousness, you really need to do practice. And go. And also, he, uh, Hagami says, about Venerable Mio discussed. How to how we ought to be arubekiowa? That is the layperson and the monk alike. Each should aim to be how each of them ought to be. And vener, uh, venerable uh, Mio himself observed the principles for every life, uh, everyday life uh, to the utmost detail. Our existence as a whole, I think, is contingent on the, those seven letters. So never uh, Mio never compromised. Right? So. Um, um, so, um, particularly uh, uh, for Hagami Sensei, Mio is a genuine aspiration for awakening, right? um, as well as uh, Mio is a sincere commitment to the practice, care and empathy for all sentient beings. Uh, Mio uh, regarded not only humans, but also stones and uh, uh, animals, and even an island uh, as a living entity. <laughs> Uh, uh, so um, uh, these aspects will be found uh, inspiring. Yeah. And Mio is pan, pan Buddhistic approach. Now, for Hagami Sensei, just as for uh, Prince Shotoku, holding con contradiction, holding contradictions is not a form of intellectual failure. It is actually a form of intellectual and spiritual e uh, excellence. Now, uh, so what's the relevance of this topic to us today? Um, well, we see the growing sense of divisiveness, polarization, combativeness uh, that uh, across the world. And one of the ways to understand uh, this tendency is to see them as, uh, un as how do they say this, um, unintended consequences of modern uh, great achievements. Uh, what do I mean by that? 
Number one, liberalism which is a great achievement, which allows us to think for ourselves and from our own perspective, but it, it can readily lead us to think only from my perspective, our perspectives, and only from our own, uh, only for ourselves. Right? Right. So that's the unintended consequence. Ability to think for myself can lead me to think only for myself. Number two, uh, te uh, technology, social media, and so forth. This is a great achievement. Uh, it, it enables us to find and interact with um, our like-minded people, but that ability um, uh, has yielded an, an intended tendency to interact only with our like-minded people. And so we reduce, uh, there's a tendency to reduce people of other groups to a conceptual abstraction or was yet develop uh, what I shall, uh, what I can call the dislike of the unlike, right? dislike of the unlike. And thirdly, individualism, this is a great achievement uh, which uh, empowers us to choose what to believe and express our opinion, but that can also lead us to um, blow the distinction between opinion and fact or tendency to think to think what supports our view to be the fact. Right? And the result is an um, entrapment in echo chamber effect. Right? And worse yet, um, uh, we readily lock ourselves up in, uh, how do I say this, in what, uh, in that echo chamber uh, effect by what uh, Michael Faraday referred to as the most frightening conviction. There is nothing quite as frightening as someone who knows they are right. Or there is nothing quite as frightening as someone who thinks they know they are right. So when, so we then begin to manifest complete intolerance and combativeness, intransigency, and what's it? Remain unaware of that fact. And I think the capacity to hold the uh, contradictions as we see in Prince Shotoku, Dengyo Daishi, Hagami Sensei, and Tendai Buddhism in general is vital, not only for us to live together in difference, uh, but also to retain and cultivate our humanness. The Tendai teaching, which allows us to appreciate and experience the, the multifaceted, uh, no, multifaceted mystery of life and reality to see it as so real and so empty, empty simultaneously is so very relevant to some of the urgent issues we are facing today. Okay. Thank you very much. Please turn on your video.